<laughs> Hello you multi melogrammatic Macallan manufacturers. Ooh, it's a malt mention. And thank you to I've got to slow this down a wee bit because it's a curious spelling. Apadi. Aphad T. Okay, so I hope I've got that right. <laughs> I've even said it twice just to kind of cover the bases. But thank you for the malt mission, uh, Aphadi. And uh, welcome, all you malt curious and whiskey fans, to the Bothy. I'm Ralphie, somewhere in a little stone hut on an island in the middle of the Irish Sea, which is it's a little bit like Avalon and Middle Earth and all the rest of it, but kind of in the real world. And I do whiskey reviews and I've just completed a, a world tour during the summer months of 2023. But for this review, which is number 991, I'm coming back to Scotch whiskey and I'm going to review for you a good value, accessible, interesting, flavoursome, single malt Scotch whiskey. Well, it's what I specialise in. No box, by the way, no container. So, good. That kind of shaves a bit off the price. And also there's no need for fancy packaging. A bottle on its own is perfectly acceptable. And also what's perfectly acceptable in this Aran Quarter cask is the fact that there's no flannel on the back of the label. They've just paid their the tax sticker to the authorities um, and it says arinwhiskey.com so you've got the website, you've got a barcode and on the front of the label it's nice and simple. What they're saying is Arin single malt scotch whiskey and then some braille on the label which is highly unusual but very positive and more distilleries should be doing this in my opinion. And then underneath that it says non-chill filtered, natural colour, and it says distilled and matured in Lochranza, Isle of Arden, and it gives you the longitude and the latitude, and it tells you it's a quarter cask. And it also tells you what size the quarter cask is, 125 litres. So throughout this label, you're getting actual, tangible, useful, real information instead of just a whole load of pretty pictures or flannel talking about uniqueness and special and blah 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 if it's not annoying you now the more you get into whiskey disingenuous marketing will annoy you because you start to get suspicious about it and then you'll find out that your suspicions are often justified so when you have a small craft orientated traditional distillery like Isle of Arden who is getting it right it really stands out and I'm very happy to recommend not just this bottle to you but the entire brand sure some folks are saying that the the old versions 25 year old and older versions of Isle of Arden are a bit too casky so f fair enough uh, particularly in relation to the price, but there's plenty of the younger versions available. The, apart from the quarter cast, the one that you're most likely to come across is the 10 year old, which is an excellent single malt. It regularly features as a top choice in the Oswis, which are the online Scotch Whiskey Awards. That's oswa.co.uk. So I've poured myself a little glass of this and I'm going to give you some more information. Um, it's bottled at 56.2%, so it's cask strength. So we really are, we're off to a really good start here. This is a whiskey which is going to attract the attention of people who actually know about whiskey and the signs of a good whiskey. Official bottling, cask strength, uh, a specific sized quarter cask, as stated, unshill filtered, natural colour, and um, it's described as aromatic and intensely fruity with tropical fruits and coconut, uh, warming spiced vanilla and gourmet apple notes. Well, I think the gourmet is about as 
pretentious as this bottle ever gets, which, I mean, it's just one little word and, you know, it's no big deal. A gourmet, a gourmet apple. Hmm. You probably find them somewhere in the markets in France, but you certainly don't find them in the UK. So what have we got here? An honestly presented, unpretentious, young, non-age statement, cask strength, integrity delivered, single malt, from a distillery which is already firmly established, a very positive, good reputation. If you don't see this, there's always the 10-year-old. The 10-year-old is another really good whiskey. When you put your nose to this, boom, it's strong. It's nippy. There's a lot of alcohol in here and it certainly gives you a bit of a bite on your nose. So we're going to be adding water most definitely. Before, before I do, what are we smelling here? Bananas, apricots, a little bit of baked apple, vanilla, coconut, a mm, little bit, maybe. Not sold in that one, but... Fresh yellow fruits notes, so banana, mango, bit of lemon. Think of the array of lemon fruits. Oh, excuse me, going about. Got a wee fly flying about here. It's just landed on me and it's given me the heebie-jeebies. Is it gone? Will I edit that out? No. <laughs> I don't edit in this channel, you know that taste. Oh. Oh, oh, oh! Bananas, bubble, bu gu bu bubble gum, baked apple and oak. And all rather intense. Oh, oh. This needs water. One teaspoon. That's five millilitres. Two teaspoon. That's ten millilitres. Three teaspoon. 15 millilitres of water. My goodness, I've not quite doubled the volume of this dram, but I have certainly diluted it. Very much so. Is this too much water? It may be for you, but it isn't for me. The more we look after our palates by diminishing the burn of alcohol, the nip of ethanol alcohol, the more we access the flavours. Not only that, but alcohol bonds on the natural flavours coming from the single malt, coming from the cask, and as a result, it needs to release them so we can smell the detail and taste the detail, taste the complexity. It's what we're buying into malt mates. It's why, it's why we buy single malts. And you can't do that when it's neat. And as for leaving your saliva to do the, do the dilution for you, all you're doing is burning your palate when you're sipping cask strength spirits neat. The exception is if they're old spirits. Old spirits are delicate and the tiny little sips, because 25, 30, 35, 40, 50 year old whiskey, it's spent a long time in that cask. It's geriatric, it's an old age pensioner just got to give it a little bit of time and treat it gently. But this is a young, probably what, six, seven years old? This is a really young, feisty single malt. So give it a good splash of water, then you'll get access. Another thing you'll get, starting to develop now, is a little bit of scotch mist, showing, proving that it's not been chill filtered. There is some filtering going on, of course, but it's basic barrier filtering. Just to remove the bits that you find, find in casks. Bits of charcoal, bits of wood, bits of hessian thread, and bits of sawdust. That's what you tend to find inside casks. Transformed. A rich, syrupy, Wonderfully heavily flavoured, unpeated, vanilla, brulee, baked apple, sultana, and yeah, there's a wee touch of coconut in there, yeah. 
it's amazing once you've added your water if you let this whiskey sit for even 10 minutes the extent to which it transforms in fact I'm going to recommend that if you buy a bottle like this it doesn't have to be this but just like this pour yourself a glass add the water let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes and before you even smell and taste it pour yourself a second glass and don't add water and just sit them side by side and gain the benefit of the experience of literally going between the two glasses. This is where we really learn. We, we learn a certain amount when we taste a whiskey in isolation of any other immediate point of reference. In other words, another poured glass of whiskey. But it's when we have immediate points of reference, when we have a flight of whiskey, three or four glasses of perhaps even the same same whiskey with different types of water in it. You'd be amazed at the different. That I tell you, that's worthy of an extras. So I'm going to come back to this. I'm looking at the signs of a really good quality whiskey here. Even with water added, the coat line in the edge of the glass, the legs running down to the inside of the glass, they're thick, viscous, and an excellent indication as to the integrity, the quality of this whiskey. But it doesn't tell you too much about the cask itself. And what I would say is that a virgin cask has been used here. Hence the reason you get the strong vanilla notes and a little bit of coconut nose from the lactones in the wood. Right. So you're going to get a young, fresh whiskey experience. Don't expect a whole load of complexity in the development and a whole load of length in the finish. It's not that kind of whiskey and it's not reflected in the price you're being charged. You're probably looking about £45 a bottle for this. That, that stands up very well in terms of value for money compared to other brands. I can assure you that. Smell and taste and then a malt mark. Fresh, spirit driven, creamy, icing sugar, slightly custardy but refreshingly so, pleasantly so. Slight confection in the nose, aromatic, lemon oil, grapefruit oil, banana, ripe banana, baked banana, and a little bit of slightly overripe mango. Sherbety, fresh, zesty. For a young whiskey, it's going quite a distance in the palate. It actually tastes ahead of its years. There's a distinct reason for that. It's called quarter casks. Quarter casks are smaller casks. Technically, generally, a quarter of the size of a standard cask. But in fact, quarter cask size do vary. So they're just generally small casks. As a result of which, when the whiskey's put into them to mature, as new make spirit, you'll find the surface to ratio area of the spirit inside the cask is greater than it would be in a large cask. And therefore, <laughs> what was I going to say next? Yeah, I'll tell you what I was going to say next. And therefore, maturation happens at a faster pace. It's as simple as that. Ah, <sighs> having a wee senior moment there. But I don't bother about them. I just roll with it. Bloopers? Hey, life's full of bloopers. We add a little bit. So long as it's little bloopers and not great big whacking, great big shocking bloopers. That's the main thing. Cheers, your good health. Now, we're seeing that. Oh. Scotch mist developing in the glass and the taste is becoming more herbaceous mint apple mint green mint a little bit of spearmint a little bit of chlorophyll a little bit of sage slightly sour sage in the background what you might call white sage depending how your knowledge of sageology anyway let's give this a a malt mark and have done with it, malt mates. Oh my goodness, I'm really enjoying this. I'm going to give this a good whacking great 83 out of 100. It's a lovely whiskey. So, so what, what was he said? 
What would you say? Hey Ralphie, why aren't you giving it 88? Or even an 89? I'll tell you why. Because I'm bringing the marks down these this year. I'm bringing the marks down because too many onliners, including myself, have been over generous to whiskey. And the problem is when you have a seriously good whiskey out there and you come across it, you don't have enough clear water in terms of marks between the decent whiskey and the really good whiskies. And another thing, we need more separation between whiskies which are chill filtered and have caramel colour. Gonna knock three points off every time because you've just downgraded the quality of delivery. Particularly if the bottling strength is 40%. Scotch whisky has got a reputation. And there's two ways a reputation can go. It can remain intact or it can be lost gradually, steadily over time. And I have a very genuine concern that Scotch whisky generally is starting to lose its reputation due to too many brands being over-processed in the delivery of smell and taste and too much reliance or leaning on marketing which is just starting to bore people. You know what I'm talking about, your malt mates. So malt mark, 83 out of 100, I recommend this. This is a damn good whiskey. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I shared it. And if you want to pop back to Ralphie Review 991 Extras, I'll be sharing a little bit more. I'll be sharing the language of labels, understanding what labels are telling us. And I'll be coming along with that shortly. Not to be missed, mop mates. Not to be. Now, where's this Clivey clicker that turns the video off? Here it is. I'm going to turn the video off.